Welcome to my latest layer making video. For this project, I'm going through the process of making soft plastic layers, from starting out and sculpting clay to make the masters, pouring a mold, and then finishing by pouring some soft plastic worms, and maybe doing some fishing as well. Enjoy the film. The type of material I'm using to make the master is polymer clay. This is Sculpey, just a, a brand of polymer clay. Uh, basically this is a, a really simple material to use, it, it's oven baked to harden it uh, and when I've done that I can file and sand and, and shape it afterwards as well as before. Um, as you can see I've not got much left because I use it for pretty much everything but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a piece off, put the rest to one side and then condition it which is really a, a case of kneading it and soften, softening it basically, stretching it out. Normally the warmth from my hands will do that job. So I'm going to give that a couple of minutes. Once that feels soft enough, I'm, I'm going to take a bit more off and put that to one side again. And then I'm going to do probably the first thing I was ever shown to do at, at infant school with a bit of clay is roll it into a a snake, or in this case a worm. So that's probably about four inches long um, and about a quarter of an inch thick, which should probably do me. And then I'm going to take a, a texturing tool I've made. This has been made from a crap piece of hardboard I had lying around. I use some spray adhesive to give it a, a thorough coat. And then stuck down some fine line writing paper that I had from a pad. Then with the Stanley knife, I mark notches all the way down on both sides at the end of the lines. To add the texturing part, I took some 30 pound monofilament line and tied a double overhand knot at one end and just wedged that into the edge of one of the grooves. Then it was just a case of wrapping uh, the line around the board. So it was straight on the front and angled on the back. Once I'd fully wrapped the board, I used a bit of super glue just to secure the end so it didn't come undone. Trimmed it off with a knife and that was my board finished. But just before I used that, I've got a, a pen and I'm going to mark the top of my little snake and then I'll lay the tool on top and just roll the texture on until this little black spot comes around to the top. There we go. I can turn that round and do the other side. I'm going to leave a little space here. There we go. That's pretty much the worm done. Um, I've got a ceramic tile and what I'm going to do is there should be a, a little, little jointed area here where the, where the two bits haven't quite met, the two bits of uh, texture. So I'm going to lay that downwards. And just straighten it up. Just really a case of, of baking it in the oven. I've preheated the kitchen oven to 130 degrees C, which is approximately 250 degrees Fahrenheit or half a gas mark. Then I'm just going to put the worm and the ceramic tile in the oven. Time wise, the instructions say to allow for 15 minutes for every quarter of an inch or 6 mil thickness of polymer clay. So I'm just going to leave this for 15 minutes. So I've taken my worm out of the oven and let it cool down. I can, if I drop it there you might be able to hear that it's hardened up. It's quite brittle, it hasn't got a lot of strength to it so I can't really flex it as it's liable to snap. 
But what I need to do now is prepare it for the uh, for the mold. And I'm gonna take that away. I've got a bit of silicon sheet, some grip sheet. This is some 100 grade sandpaper. Uh, and I've just stuck this to a piece of plywood. And I'm gonna sand a flat spot. So it's really, this is the same way it was laying on the tile. So it's kind of sitting with the back slightly flattened. And I'm just gonna sand. And what I'm looking to take off is probably about a quarter to a third. I think that's about enough. Let's get rid of this. Just wipe a bit of the sawdust off. And then to make the base of my mold, I've got a piece of glass. This is from a picture frame. And what I'm gonna do is use a bit of super glue and run a, run a bead down. Doesn't need to be a huge amount. I'm just gonna spread that out. Just a bit more there. And then I'm going to turn that over and just stick it down. I don't want it to move. I want it to lay flat on the glass. So I'm going to press that for a for a bit until it sets. And hopefully if I turn the thing over, it should have made a complete seal on the glass. I can see if there's anything missing. But that looks that looks pretty reasonable. So I'll give that a few minutes just to harden up. So I've added a couple of extra worms. This one's got a, a flattened tail on the end and this one's just a little bit fatter. Before I put the mold box on, I'm gonna take some little balls with polymer clay and just flatten them at the end. And these are for when I'm pouring, they're not, they're gonna be cut off once it's poured, but they're just to help me um, when I first start pouring. Instead of trying to pour to a line, I can start in these kind of wider spaces. And as I say, when I've finished, I'll cut them off. I'll leave this end, obviously, because it's got a paddle tail that's going to stay on. For a mould box, I'm using a Lego mould box, uh, which is just slightly wider uh, and longer than the worms probably about, what, 10 mil, 3 eighths of an inch around. And what I need to do with that is take a bit of ordinary modeling clay and just push it all the way around. So I'm getting my glass back. I'm gonna lay that over the top. And press it into place. That 
take off any excess just with a bit of bamboo and then I can turn it over and just check that everything's sealed there looks to be a little a little gap here but the rest of it's pretty okay so I'm just going to push a bit of plasticine into that gap Before I pour the mold, I'm going to check that it's level and it's not. Just see if I can jiggle it about. No, it's rising at this corner, I think. Yeah. So I'm just going to shim it up with a bit of uh, bit of folded paper. So the silicon I'm using for the mold is a two-part RTV silicon. This is the base and I've got a catalyst here. I've measured out 200 grams of the base and I'm going to add to that 20 grams of the catalyst. That should give me just over half an inch thickness in the mold. I'm wearing gloves just to protect my hand and it's a case of mixing. And it really needs a thorough mix, the sides scraped down the bottom. So the silicon's had a really good mix. I've scraped the sides and I've been stirring it for probably four or five minutes. And what I'm going to do now is tip it out. And to pour it onto the mould, I'm using a thin stream. And what this should do is stretch the silicon and pop the bubbles as they come out. And because I'm pouring in the same point, the silicon will also stretch across the mould area. And again, forcing the bubbles to pop. So I'm not going to scrape the bottom of the container and get every last bit out just in case it's not fully mixed. But that will self level itself out and most of the bubbles will pop. So I'm going to leave that overnight. It's a little over 24 hours later and the silicon seems to have set up properly. If I turn it over, I can see I've got a, a clear line there and I haven't got any silicon sticking into the flat area at the back. So I'm going to take it apart. take out my little bits there my pouring points 
and these little bits here I can just snap these off just looking at there looks to be a tiny bit here that's really thin stuff that's crept underneath but that can just be pulled off and I would say my mold ready and I can go and get my stuff for pouring the main material I'm using to make the worms is layer flex this is a, a type of liquid PVC or plastisol and all I've done really to prepare this is given it a good shape just to mix up any any solid parts with any plasticizers in it there's a huge range of colors available scents even glitters all I'm going to be using is just some red and some layer lube which is a type of oil to heat the liquid PVC I'm using a, a standard microwave this is a 700 watt the cheapest really I could find in the supermarket all the manufacturers of liquid PVC recommend that you don't do this in a microwave that you use for cooking food uh, so this has got to be kept separate obviously as a container I need something that's microwave proof so I'm just using a Pyrex jug health and safety wise I use a respirator to protect my lungs that's what most of the manufacturers of these type of products recommend and um, obviously gloves to cover my hands and a long sleeved shirt just to stop any splashes burning me this material gets up to the temperature of kind of hot cooking fat that you'd use to fry with as a final preparation I level the table with a copy of the old man of the sea by Ernest Hemingway I think as a fellow fisherman I don't think he'll mind so the first job I'm going to do is just take a bit of layer lube put a drop on my finger and just run that into the mould put that to one side for the plaster sole I'm going to pour out about a quarter of a pint 150ml now just in the microwave now this is a bit trial and error so normally what I, this is a low powered microwave so I normally start off with a couple of minutes for this kind of quantity full power let it go then let's get that on and see it started to go started to clear it's very lumpy so I'm going to give that another mini. So it's starting to clear there. I can see that. Let's give it a bit of a mix up. Still some solids in. I can see I'm making some bubbles so I'm probably going to give that about another 30 seconds let's go again yeah that's looking more like it it's kind of the consistency of uh, thin oil there's still some bubbles in there not a huge amount but I'm going to add the dye Give it a few drops. Yeah. So I'm going to give that. So I'm going to give that another thirty seconds. Oops. 
So that looks about right. I think I'm just going to have a go at pouring. It's a little rough and ready. So I'm going to leave that a couple of minutes to cool. Feels about right. Let's just see. Yeah, a little soft, but not bad. This is my first one. This I'll probably remelt and do again, to be honest. It's got a bit of a fins. I mean, these will come off, but I'll probably remelt that, which is the great thing about soft plastics, that they can be remelted. For these, I can just pull these ends off. And again, those little bits can be remelted. So I'm going to go on and make some more baits and in between pours I'm just going to give the uh, Plastisol 30 second blasts in the microwave to keep the temperature up for pouring. So I've let my worms cool. It took me about probably about 15 minutes to pour this little lot. Um, I got a bit better as time went on. The texture on these is really great. I'm quite chuffed with that. Uh, I only used half of what I poured out so about 75 millilitres for this lot. Maybe a bit less than that to be honest. Um, and obviously I've got a, a silicon mould there that I can keep on using probably a few hundred times I would have thought I'm off to do a bit of fishing If you've enjoyed the video feel free to share, like or leave some feedback in the comments. For more videos you can click on the link to my channel or subscribe to be notified of future videos.